Okay, so I wanted to go, oh, it's been a long day, a lot of things have taken place, so I just wanted to go over what took place in Mel's pod today and why Mel and Todd and Jim and Doc are all in solitary confinement. So is what happened, um, you can go to Susan DeLumis's website or Facebook page I mean and kind of get more of the backstory here but that new counselor that's at the facility that's been giving them all heck in um, Jerry's pod now came to Mel, Cliven, Davey and Todd and Doc and Jim's pod today. She is completely setting her own rules. Um, she started yelling at them all and telling them that they had to clean out uh, their, their cubby areas, that no papers can be on top of their cubby, no pictures can be on the wall, on their beds. And I might emphasize that this has been completely fine for the last year and a half that these guys have been there. So, is what happened is, that, you know, she was getting after him because of that. And just before she came in though, Doc, who is the 93 year old veteran, who has been in jail with them for quite a while, Davy and Mel have been caring for him, making sure that all of his needs are met, because he's wheelchair bound, he can't stand on his own. Well, a little bit, but he's not secure. So anyways, Doc has been having serious medical problems. He's been having chest pains, shortness of breath, um, and a rash and sores because of being confined to his wheelchair. So, and they've been refusing to get him medical care. And last week, Mel was able, able to finally get them to give him medical care for his chest pains and shortness of breath. So they took Doc to the hospital, they brought him back like a day later and didn't do anything for him, no medication, anything, just kind of too bad for you. So then today a guard comes in and Mel starts showing them Doc's finger. He has an ingrown thumbnail and Mel said that he, he's like, this is the worst ingrown fingernail that I've ever seen. He said the pus bubbles are like, deep but you can see them through the skin and it's giant and it's swollen. Mel's worried that he's going to get staph infection. The dog can't sleep at night because it is so incredibly painful and Mel's worried it needs to be operated on and the pus drained. Um, so he brought this guard over and asked her to look at it. She, he's like, I know you're not a doctor, but medical is refusing to see him. So can you take a look at his finger? So she grabs it, she looks at it, and she's like, what's your name? And so Doc gives him her name and his inmate number. And as she's walking away, she kind of made some smart aleck remark. And Mel said, just remember that he's a human and he has feelings. And so then she left. Well then, here comes this counselor that's gonna gut the place and make them throw away all their things. And this old guy, Jim, he's 71, that's in there, had just bought a new pair of shoes from the commissary and they were on top of his bin because they wouldn't fit inside of it. So she started belittling him to asking if any of you in here were military. And Todd said, well, I don't think that's really any of your business and what does it matter? And she said, well, because if you were in the military, then I could teach you how to box up this cubby. So she was getting really degrading, really belligerent with them. And Todd snapped off and said, you know, everything has been just fine in here. There's been no incident. Everybody has been peaceful. Everybody's been happy. And then you walk in and you, you know, bring the hell with you. And he's like, why don't you just leave things be? Like, there's protocol and we've all been following it, and now you're gonna come in and set a name for yourself? Well, then she storms out. Then when she comes back in and she brings all these lieutenants in with her, and the lieutenants yell for lockdown. So little old Doc, that's 93 years old, is trying to push his wheelchair, like use it as a walker, and he's pushing his wheelchair along, 
and they started screaming at Doc to hurry up. And he's 93. He ain't going to move very fast. So they start hounding Doc. They tell Todd to roll up and they drag Todd out. And so Doc lifts up his wheelchair with his little feeble body and he slams the back wheels down on the ground and he said, I just want to be treated like a human and not an animal. Stop it. You know? And so then that was kind of over and they get Doc over to his bed and he sits down. Well, then they really start writing this gym guy for the shoes. And so then they come in and they make Jim roll up and they haul him off to solitary, handcuff him and haul him off to solitary. Then they come back in and they grab Doc and start handcuffing Doc. Well, Mel wasn't going to stand for that. So he said, hey, you know, what are you taking the old guy for? He hasn't done anything wrong, you know. And so then they make an incident out of that and Mel says, hey, look, this is a 93-year-old doctor and a veteran at that. You can't be rushing him and you can't treat him like that. And he told the guard that had looked at his finger earlier, her and the counselor, he said, when this old man dies in your care, that's on you. And they said, well, how so? And he said, because you were responsible for his well-being and his welfare. And for you to treat him this way, he is going to die. He is going to die back there in solitary. And that blood will be on your hands because you are ultimately responsible for him. Anyways, so then they take Doc out and then a, a little bit later they come in and they make Mel roll up and drag Mel out. Um, there was a lot of other things that transpired, but I can't remember them all. So anyways, then Mel, um, when they're bringing him to solitary confinement, it's like an upstairs and a downstairs and a courtroom and there's cells below and cells above. And they were taking Mel up the stairs and he said, I looked down like underneath the stairwell and I could see Doc down under his pod on the other side. And so he said, I was trying to wave to, so that Doc would see me. And he said, but I don't, I didn't think that Doc could see me because he was trying to get a guard to help him. And he said, and I looked over and Doc just uh, took his hands and he made a fist above his head and he just shook his hands above like way to go and Mel said you know that old 93 year old doctor he fought the Nazis back in in the war and he's fighting the Nazis again he's like I'm so proud of that old man so then they took Mel up to his cell and they get him in his cell and he said he just started singing it he's like I knew at that moment that I was right where I needed to be I stood up for a defenseless old man that they have been trying to kill for months in there they've been treating him like garbage they've been neglecting him they've been abusing him and he's like I stood up for somebody that needed me to stand up for him and he said it so he started singing at the top of his lungs do what is right let the consequence follow and he said he wanted me to let you guys all know that he him and Davey and Todd, oh, Todd and Mel were yelling across each other and telling each other well done for defending the doctor. And anyways, he said, we are all right where we want to be. Me, Jim, Doc, and Todd, we, we fought actual terrorists today and we told them enough is enough. You're not going to treat us like animals anymore. You're going to treat us like humans. So anyways, I don't know how long they're going to be in solitary for, but Mel's really worried about Doc. You know, I need all of you guys to pray for Doc. I mean, he is an old man and he is not guilty of what they said he's guilty of. There's a lot of things out there on the internet about his case. And I want you to know that those things are not the way it was. The one of the major thing is, is they claim that he wrote all these prescriptions to people that were selling him as drugs. When in actuality, the only illegal prescriptions that he wrote were to undercover FBI agents that had come in under aliases because Doc refused to give up all of his client folders to the federal government. He said he wouldn't do it. He said it violated the HIPAA clause and he was not turning over all of his, his client files. So then they started sending in FBI agents with fake names to get him to write him prescriptions. And Doc said, they seemed like they were in pain. 
I thought that their pain was legitimate and I wrote them prescriptions for it. And he said, it wasn't the amount that they said there was. And to go along with that, there was a member, one member of the jury that was a doctor. And that doctor cited 100% with Doc and said that what he did was right. He was, he was upholding his oath and he was treating people and he did nothing wrong. Well, Stephen Myrie, the lead prosecutor, threw that member of the jury off, said that he was influencing the jury because of his medical knowledge. So think about that. Doc would not be in jail right now. He would have had a mistrial and he would be home with his family. But the government, they, they can't allow somebody to win. And then on top of that, Stephen Myrie raided this old man's home and he took his, his gold coin collection that he has been accumulating since he was 14 years old, seized it all. He did not have a court order for that and they took it anyways. Then they also took 70 properties that this old man has acquired over 67 years. Took all of his properties and said, well, some of the money used for those properties or for those coins could have come from him practicing illegally. There was no court order for those things. And they robbed this old man blind because they're greedy. He had assets that they wanted and they took them. So there's a lot more details involved in this case. I've been studying the case. I've been reading transcripts and everything else. So don't judge a book by its cover because it is never the way the government says it is. So if any of you can write a letter of recommendation for Doc, I'm writing a letter this week. I am telling the judge that he needs to allow Doc to go home on house arrest or whatever for his because his sentencing is on the 21st of the of june so we need to remind this judge that in this country we don't believe in cruel and unusual punishment and where this 93 year old war veteran is he is enduring cruel and unusual punishment and we need to demand that this doctor be placed at home on house arrest so if you guys can do that, I'll post uh, the judge's address um, on my Facebook page um, in a little bit. I just got home from work and I've got to get some things done. So anyways, just recap, the guys all got to sent to solitary because they were standing up for Doc and resisting unnecessary and ridiculous demands of a counselor that's on a rampage and trying to make a name for herself for the new warden. So, but they're all fine. Everyone's good. Everybody's happy. And if anything else transpires, I'll let you know. So have a good night. Sorry, that was a little long winded. I try to keep these things short, but have a good night and pray for the good doctor and pray for Jim. There's 71 I think 71 or 77, I don't remember, and Doc's 93, and they're spending their nights in solitary confinement with very paper-thin skin because they're so old and it's freezing cold in there. So say prayers for them to have strength and to be able to endure however long they're going to be in solitary. Have a good night. Pray for America.